What's going on? He's actually in both departments, biology and chemistry, so he's doing work in both the same. So we have these kind of chemistry we're attaching to a larger molecule. My name is Sheldon Kwok. Uh, I'm a junior at Columbia College. I'm majoring in chemical physics and pre-med. And I uh, just wanted to talk to you about my work today on uh, metal nanoparticles. I've been working in Professor Eisenthal's lab in the chemistry department for the past year and a half. And uh, my, my work has been mainly focused on metal nanoparticles and studying them with really, really powerful lasers. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about metal nanoparticles first. These metal nanoparticles are really, really interesting the last several years, not only because they're really small. These are some uh, transmission electron microscope images all these nanoparticles. These ones are 60 nanometers. Um, and it's really hard to, to really see how small these are without looking at that. You have to look at a microscope to really appreciate that. But um, also, these, nano, these metal nanoparticles um, have what you call a plasmon resonance. So what happens is when you hit a metal nanoparticle with light, since light is, is an electromagnetic wave, that's going to oscillate electrons up and down. And there's a, there's a specific resonance frequency at which the metal nanoparticle electrons oscillate. It's just like pushing a swing, you get a resonance frequency. These, this resonance frequency here generates gigantic electric field enhancements of the light. And that leads to really strong scattering and absorption of light, which allows us to use these metal nanoparticles for many different purposes and applications, some of which are in uh, photovoltaics. Got a couple applications here where if you uh, kind of put, we kind of just line a solar panel with nanoparticles. You you greatly fit, you greatly increase their efficiency because the, the it will scatter the light into the solar panel and trap it there. Or in cancer research, where you conjugate these nanoparticles, antibodies, stick it into a, bo a body that will stick to certain cancer cells. Then you hit it with light, and if it's at the resonance frequency, it's going to absorb that light and generate heat. And that heat can be used to kill cells selectively. So that's a really big. Uh, that's, a really big, uh, that's, that's really big in research right now in terms of the cancer research. But um, what we're interested in in the chemistry department is studying the fundamental properties of the nanoparticle surface. Um, how that nano nanoparticle surface interacts with other molecules and how the enhancement actually works. And the way, the way we do this is using a technique called second harmonic generation. Um, this technique you can only use with a really, really powerful laser. Um, so to, just to give you an idea of how powerful these lasers are, essentially, um, if you put like a piece of paper there, it goes on fire immediately. If you, if you focus that laser, you can get air to ionize. You kind of get this like fireball that's kind of fixated in the air in all these different colors because you turn the, gases, the gas air into a plasma. But um, with those really strong laser pulses hitting these nanoparticles, you can get uh, what you call a second order polarization. So this is a polarization of light as a result of light, which is electric field. Um, typically, you're only interested in the first order polarization, which accounts for all scattering and absorption of light. But what we're interested in second order generation is the second order polarization. And because of some pretty easy mathematical considerations, um, that is only allowed an interface, so an interface between two different media. Basically, that allows us to selectively study the surface of nanoparticles. And by doing that, we can study what the electric field is at that surface and how that enhances other molecules. And uh, the experiment that, that we use to kind of test this out and see what that enhancement is, how to quantify that, is um, comparing the, uh, the SHG signal of polystyrene, uh, nanopart polystyrene nanoparticles and this dye molecule called malachite green versus alloy nanoparticles versus malachite green. Um, polystyrene particles are essentially insulator particles, so they have no plasmon resonance. And you can see here that the signal goes up to 2000 as this dye molecule absorbs onto the surface due to SHG signal. But with the metal nanoparticle, um, that's a 1090 alloy, which is 10% gold, 90% silver, you get signal up to 80,000 um, counts per second. So that's just kind of like a simple way to um, quantify that enhancement and, and explain um, that, that, enhan that interaction that comes from the surface. And you can really enhance um, different dye molecules that attach to nanoparticle. So we're hoping that all of these, these studies, and including all of these characterization studies, understanding the structure of the nanoparticle, 
Um, this, is, um, this is understanding how monodispersed they are and what charge they are. All these different things in chemistry and physics can kind of lead to a greater understanding of uh, what these nanoparticles do, how they actually work in these different applications, because even though there's so many applications, it's not really well understood why it happens and what the physical um, processes that happen that allow, that allow us to use them. Um, so that, that, that's, that's my work for the moment. Um, I want to thank Lewis Haber, who's my mentor. He's a postdoc working in Eisenthal Lab. Um, and also Professor Eisenthal in the chemistry department. And uh, thank you.